So in this next flowchart, we're going to continue our look at intracellular communication, and we'll entitle it Intracellular Communication 2. So here, what we're going to be looking at is the, are the rest of the forms of intracellular communication involved in the endocrine system. Big picture idea is that the endocrine system is all about sending signals, sending messages, getting those messages received, and then having a subsequent physiological response to those messages. So, we've looked at endocrine signaling, we've looked at paracrine and autocrine signaling. The next up on this signaling pathway journey is the idea of synaptic signaling. So this is a separate class of intracellular communication. So, synaptic signaling. Here we're going to look at our basic unit, which actually is now the neuron. So neurons are equal to the basic unit of synaptic signaling. Neurons are going to be specialized nerve cells that are specifically going to be involved in this idea of junctions. So neurons themselves will state the following. They form specialized junctions. So let's write this down. They form specialized, let me rewrite that, specialized junctions with the target cell with TC. Remember the target cell is still there, it's still important, and the specialized junctions that are formed are actually given a specific name. A junction is just a space in between, let's say, two spots. We're going to have this sort of empty space between a neuron and a target cell. That neuron and target cell space, that specialized junction, is going to be termed synapse. So these are synapses that form between what? between the neuron and the target cell. The neuron is that nerve cell. The target cell is the one that's going to be receiving a specific message that's going to have the specific receptors necessary for that message to be received. So what happens in this situation of synaptic signaling is the following. We utilize the synapse junction for the message. What happens uh, here is that we have neurotransmitters. So this is a new term. Neurotransmitters are going to be these things, I'll just call them for right now, these are the messages that neurons possess within them. They put them into these vesicles. We don't need to know the specifics about this message vesicle transfer just yet. We'll, we'll talk about that when we talk about synapses and the nervous system later on. But these neurotransmitters, think of them as messages, as chemical signals that are produced and also subsequently released. We wouldn't say secreted in this situation. Release is actually the correct term because secretion happens via regular cells. When we talk about uh, neurons specifically, what we're doing here, we're producing and releasing by neurons. So we're going to sort of change our terminology a little bit. These are neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are going to transmit a neural message by the neurons being produced and secreted. Once they are produced and secreted, they have to then diffuse across the synapse. So key idea here is that because we're diffusing across the synapse, are we using any energy? Are we going far distance? No, we're not going relatively far. We're just diffusing across a very small junction called a synapse. That junction is again between the neuron and the target cell. Once we have gone across this specialized junction, we will then bind to the target cell receptor, and that target cell receptor will then send an intracellular message to have a certain, let's say, physiological response to whatever the neurotransmitter said to do. Some of these responses are absolutely critical and some of the most important functions of the human of human life altogether, I would say. Things like memory, memory storage, and memory associations and memory creation is done via a synaptic signaling messaging system. Movement. You're going to have neuromuscular junctions, which we'll talk about when we talk about uh, the muscul skeletal muscular system. These, these neuromuscular junctions, which are just synapses between the neuron and the associated muscle fiber, are going to have the same exact sort of synaptic signaling message happening as described here, and also sensation which we're going to, again, all of this is going to be highlighted further when we begin talking about the nervous system. But what you can see here, hopefully, is that the endocrine system and the nervous system very much are interacted with each other. A lot of the time, synaptic signaling will be broadly referred to as neuroendocrine signaling, neuroendocrine system, therefore. So it's a very broad and specific uh, idea that we see here between the nervous system and the endocrine system, a message system and another message system interacting with 
each other by this neuron target cell synapse orientation and arrangement. So a very powerful system that we have here of talking to cells, of cells talking with each other. Speaking of synaptic signaling and the neuroendocrine signaling, that's actually our next one. Okay, We can actually subdivide and get, go even further in detail in terms of what the next, another way to talk about signaling would be neuroendocrine signaling. Because here, right now, we're saying very broadly, we just have a neuron and we have a target cell. But when we talk about neuroendocrine signaling specifically, um, I sort of mislabeled this when I said that. I don't really, what I mean by neuroendocrine signaling is that what we have are neurosecretory cells. This is what you need here. So instead of having just broadly saying the functional unit is a neuron, here the functional unit are neurosecretory cells, which are just very specialized neurons. They are even more specialized than the neurons we've already mentioned, nerve cells in other words. Neurosecretory cells will secrete neurohormones. So now they are secreting a specific type of neurotransmitter called neurohormones. And when you secrete these neurohormones, you're going to have them diffuse from the neuron to the bloodstream. Diffused from neuron to bloodstream. Whenever you see bloodstream, what can you say? You can already see a big difference between neuroendocrine signaling and synaptic signaling. Synaptic signaling, very short distance. You have neuron, you have target cell, you have synapse, very small junction that's going to be where the neurotransmitter is going to diffuse through and then reach the target cell receptor. Here we have a much more expansive orientation because we have a neural hormone that's released and secreted from the neuron to the bloodstream. Remember, the bloodstream is that highway. It has access to the entire body. And thus, this is much more of a long distance idea here. In addition, I want you to make sure you look at figure 45.2. This shows intracellular communication via secretion vesicles. So it allows us to visualize this in a much better orientation. Now, all of the intracellular communication forms that we looked at, neuroendocrine, synaptic, paracrine, autocrine, endocrine, all of those were within the system. They're all, I would say, internal. There's actually a bit of an external signaling that we can also classify, um, and that's called pheromone signaling. This is something we actually talked about in Bio 1 when we talked about animal behavior, and we're going to re-mention it because it's also a form of communicating between cells. Pheromone signaling is going to utilize the chemical message called a pheromone. Notice this root of moan coming up, just like a hormone, but it's a little bit different because this is going to be something that's still a chemical message, right? But this chemical message is released into external environments. Released into external, EXT for external environments. Hormones were always released and maintained and stayed within the internal environment. Now we're actually going on the outside of the organism. And then interestingly enough here, the target here is different. It's not the same body. It's not the same internal cells. It's actually going to be another individual of the species. Another individual of the species that, can, that has the specific receptor, let's say, that can understand what the pheromone is saying. So what we broadly can say about pheromone signaling is that it functions in very classic animal behavior mechanisms, such as territory. So what you often have is you have certain territorial animals, they will secrete pheromones, and these pheromones will be released usually through their urine. They will urinate in certain territorial, certain territorial areas, and thus that urination will give off these pheromones that will tell other animals that, hey, this is my territory. What are you doing here? You're sending an intracellular, well not intra, this would actually be extracellular communication. You're sending a, a message to other people via some sort of chemical, and that's what we're talking about when we say endocrine as a whole. Um, in, order, in addition, this could be also used as a warning signal and also a lot of times in mating. You will send sexual pheromones that will say that an animal is in heat and ready to mate. Um, and that usually will be done when you have a correct sort of male and female uh, match between certain organisms that utilize pheromone signaling for mating processes. And that covers our forms of intracellular communication. Uh, we'll move forward in this lecture by now speaking about more specific chemical properties of hormones and messages used in the endocrine system.